What's up everybody? If you like the kind of work that I do on here, do consider supporting my demonetized channel on Patreon. So, lots of controversy since uh, last night's fight, so let's talk about it. <clears throat> so I rescored the fight today, but unlike watching it quote-unquote live, uh, you could listen to what I had to say in my original video, but just to refresh people's memory or for any of you who may be just getting here, let me take a sip of my tea. My dog woke me up at 3 a.m. barking at something, so I watched the fight on replay at that time, and I scored it the way I did. 7-5 for Estrada. Maybe a draw, arguably a draw. Hopefully my battery doesn't die on us. But I went back and watched it this morning and, you know, I would slow down the action, replay the exchanges just to get a better idea of what exactly transpired, right? Using modern technology of playback, replay, slow-mo, so on and so forth. And I had the fight. 7-5 to Chocolatito. Now, the judges don't have, as I've been saying forever now, they don't have the benefit. That's Casey, by the way. She's uh, right by the house as she's about to give birth any day now, so we got to monitor her. It's a goat. Anyway, um, yeah, the judges don't have the, the benefit of that, right? So... My initial initial reaction to the fight was what a judge potentially could have seen on the night. But even then, you know, we as viewers on TV and otherwise are getting four or five different camera angles. And the live feed is constantly being edited. So that in most cases, we get the best view of the fight, right? If it's someone like Canelo or Mayweather fighting, we get to see... Uh, a lot more than the other way around their backs right so that you can't see punches landing on their head and uh, you could see or their body and you can see them landing punches on their opponent but it is what it is it's and what it is is just another way of fixing outcomes but in this fight i didn't feel like we got that we got very good uh very well edited for our benefit light feed right judges don't have that so i think those two seven five either way scores were perfectly acceptable obviously the 117 111 or what whatever it was from oscar's whatever his name was sucre or something like that right venezuelan judge uh clearly that guy wasn't there to do his job properly for whatever reason right but as i had already hinted in my um prediction video Estrada was given some breaks. He looked like the guy who was a little bit protected by the establishment, right? And this continued into this fight. So I could see how that score would just enrage people and maybe have them go a little bit overboard and call a robbery and whatever. If that's what you want to do, that's what you want to do. I do think the fight could have gone either way, even though after having watched it again... I think Roman should have won the fight, right? But, you know, I have some Estrada fans come at me yelling, screaming, uh, robbery, this and that. I'll watch the fight again and maybe I'll have it 7-5 Estrada. You know what I mean? It, it's one of those things. And again, I was able to slow down the action and really dig into what was happening. And yeah, Chocolatito, just as in the first fight, landed the better punches. He did. And more of them in just enough rounds. That's what I thought upon second watch. But again, I'll watch it again and maybe I'll see something else that I missed. I don't envy any judges or the judges, the two judges that scored this fight, right? The guy that was probably getting paid to, you know, fill out the card for Estrada. Yeah, I, mean, I won't say I envy him, but, you know, shit, I wish they'd pay me. The money to <laughs> do some shit like that, right? Just playing. Um, but, yeah, so... I thought Chocolatito should have won this fight. 
but watching it live, I thought Estrada did. If I watch it again, maybe I'll have it a draw, you know what I mean? 7-5 either way, where I stand right now, would have been perfectly acceptable. Obviously, Chocolatito didn't get any breaks in this fight, and Estrada did. Yeah? Obviously. Uh, oh, and after the fight, Chocolatito said... Um, oh, I forget what the guy's name was. Oh, yeah. <laughs> he said he said Jose Feliciano, which is the Latin version of Stevie Wonder, was scoring this fight. <laughs> and Estrada said it, it was a draw. So, there you go. Maybe it should have been a draw. Um, yeah, and oh, a little bit about dirty tactics. Yeah, Estrada started low blowing blatantly because Chocolatito was starting to get to him, in my opinion. Um, but then some of the low blows from him were just there was nothing else to punch at. Chocolatito's defense was so good, some of the punches straight low because uh, he was trying to get him in there, but there really was no target. I think that's just my opinion. Both of their uh, trunks were high, so anything on the belt, fully on the belt, was okay. But if any part of your fist, any of your knuckles went below the belt, also, while also hitting the belt, obviously that was low. So, there were quite a few low blows by Estrada, but Chocolatito got a few of his own in. I'm not saying they were intentional. And he kind of jumped in with his head a, a couple of times, a couple of three times, I guess. Uh... <laughs> So, yeah, it was what it was, man. I don't know. I don't have any real complaints about about that. Uh, they handled their business insofar as that, I thought. But, yeah, Estrada did initiate the dirty tactics, in my opinion, because Chocolatito was getting to him. So that's that. I don't want to talk about this fight anymore. Uh, there are far more important things going on in my life and hopefully yours that Maybe we could just move past this. Cool. About uh, Marvin Hagler. Um, I just told you. I gave you my feedback, right? I said that I heard about it and I felt nothing. So I'm not going to virtue signal. Me, 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 me. I, 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 I. Somebody came around saying that I was throwing shade at, at some people. Um, you know. We do live in this snowflake culture when, whenever you express your opinion about yourself, but maybe it's not the kind of opinion that the snowflakes want you to have, uh, then they take offense to it and they want to cancel you and so on and so forth, right? So uh, those people, I generally get rid of them very quickly. I cleanse and purify and um, clean my channel of these sort of people. I have no need... A desire to interact with anyone like that I don't know how old they are but they seem like a bunch of kids to me and just just FYI for those of you who don't know there are and have been for many many years these little communities within the YTBC that are mostly underground a bunch of sock puppet accounts different people with different accounts who try to manipulate people uh, create strife discord uh, they want to curate people's content. They they think, they think that they're important. They they think that their word is better than anybody else's, and they think that they get to, uh, by hook or by crook, impose their worldview or opinion about boxing or a uh, boxer onto everybody else. And those who disagree, they will work to destroy them. Basically, uh, total, complete, and utter authoritarian snowflakes. Uh, if I were king, I would line them up against the wall, all of them and uh, give him a good spanking. Um, not in so many words. But, you know, when, when you get an apple with, you know, uh, a rotten or bug-infested part, you cut it out. You know what I mean? Basically. At any rate, uh, the LDBC, and I'm not saying everybody in the LDBC, used to be that, and I'm sure it still is to a large degree, but it's one of, that's one of those communities that went overground, and, you know, I guess they grew enough balls, some of them anyway, to, uh, to show their faces, right, some of them. And I'm not saying everybody that rolls with that whole thing is that exactly, but that's one example of this sort of underground community, or what used to be an underground community in the YTBC. Now you got 
Uh, it seems like you have at least one with the Mexican slant, and then there are a couple other people who are just, I don't know what the fuck they think they are, some kind of mavericks and, and know-it-alls and, and, you know, authoritarians, and they just basically want to tell other people what they can and cannot say, basically. You know what I mean? Line them up against the wall and spank them. Uh, let's bring back tarring and feathering people, huh? That'll teach them a lesson. <laughs> uh, figuratively speaking, of course, of course. Anyway, you know, yeah, I, for me to come out and say, oh, rest in peace, Marvin Hagler, oh, what a sad news, and oh, what a, you know, wonderful person he was, and, you know, da, 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 da. that would have been virtue signaling, right? None of those thoughts came to mind after, after I heard about his death. Uh, when, whenever I hear about celebrities dying, when I, yeah, when I was a kid, um, it would affect me emotionally. Very rarely, Michael Jackson uh, dying. I guess I wasn't a kid anymore, but that, that kind of shook me up a little bit because for just like five seconds, simply because I don't know if I thought he was some kind of bionic man that was going to live forever, or because his music had. A great impact on me when I was a child and you know helped me get through some rough patches here and there Probably that has something to do with that. But these days, you know, I mean fuck I'm 42 years old man like celebrities dying doesn't faze me and it, it, it just doesn't There's no emotional reaction. Well, you want me to force something like if you are having a, an emotional reaction to hearing of a celebrity dying or something like that, then you need to, or don't, I don't know, I don't care. But maybe you could investigate why that is, right? Maybe you have legit reasons for that. Uh, maybe you're just, you know, brainwashed by TV and, and you think that pixels on the screen are somehow more important than real people in real life dying. Right? Why isn't anybody talking about all the people in their community dying after getting put on a respirator at the local hospital? Nobody's saying, rest in peace, you know, so on and so forth. Rest in peace, my neighbor. My, um, my friend's mother, um, here in Ecuador, had struggled with pneumonia, like, last 10 years of her life. She would get periodic pneumonia and, and get very, very sick, right? She got it this year, too. They took her to the hospital. They gave her one, two, three, four, five COVID tests. All of them came back negative. So finally one of them came up positive, then she died, and you know, you know the rest, you know the rest, right? Um, why aren't we talking about those people dying? Hmm? Or perfectly fine, young, healthy young men driving themselves to the hospital because they failed a COVID test at the local Walgreens, or whatever that means, right? Let's not get into all of that. Drove themselves to the hospital and two days later they were dead. <laughs> After getting put on a respirator, right? Like, why aren't we saying rest in peace those people and, and talking about what the fuck is going on with all of that? Marvin Hagler? Marvin Hagler? Most of you weren't even old enough. Most of you probably weren't even alive when he was fighting. And a lot of you weren't even old enough to understand boxing. Even if somehow you happened to see some of his fights live and if i'm not talking about you then calm the fuck down right so it's just like this celebrity worship man it's gross it's weird you're externalizing your power you're not concentrating on that which is important that which is worthwhile you're just you're mourning for someone who didn't give a fuck about you basically that's how you're playing yourself and externalizing yourself. Now, if you had a personal relationship with Hagler or some great thinker died that really you think had an impact on the world or you and you, th you thought maybe he had a lot more to, to contribute still. Yeah, there's something to mourn there. But like Marvin Hagler stopped fighting a long time ago. It'd be another thing if he was still in his prime and fighting and then, then he died suddenly. We'd be like, oh, damn. We, I wanted to see this fight. I wanted to see that fight. But that would, that would still be selfish, right? Whatever, man. I don't feel like talking about this anymore. It, it's a little bit creepy, man. The virtue signaling, that's just... 
And I'm not saying everyone does that, but a lot of people do. It, it's fucking creepy as fuck, man. It, I had absolutely zero reaction to the news. It meant nothing to me. Marvin Hagler meant nothing to me. Just like Pacquiao doesn't mean anything to me. Triple G doesn't mean anything to me. I just like to watch boxing. I've never had the only poster of any fighter that I've ever had on any of my walls in my 42 fucking years on this planet was Bruce Lee when I was nine years old. Grow the fuck up. Thanks for watching.